If you want to grow more of your food. There are three things you definitely should be growing if you want to be more self-sufficient on your farm. There are also some things that you should not be growing and in this video we're going to talk about what you should be growing and what you should not be growing. Get it? You? <laughs> oh no! If you're watching this video, you're probably not a full-time farmer. Which means your time for growing your own food is very limited. So you have to prioritize. In our last video in this series, we talked about how much food we're raising for our own family. 70% now. That, that's 70% of all our food. Yeah, that's awesome. We're producing here in our homestead. <laughs> that, we also reached out to all of you out there in the homestead audience, and we found over 100 different homesteads that are raising around 75% of their food. And we asked them, what are they growing? What do they find to be the most efficient thing to grow on their homestead? Some of the things we learned actually really surprised me, some of the ways they're growing a lot of food. And really inspired me. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about these big producers. What are the big producers growing? And big producers, that makes them sound too much like. A cow, <laughs> a dairy cow. <laughs> the big growers, grow a bunchies. It sounds like an underwear malfunction. <laughs> <laughs> big growths? Big, big producers, we can't get better than that. We'll call them the big producers. What were our big homestead producers growing? There were a big three that every homestead that we talked to who was growing this much food, you'll find these three different kinds of foods being produced on all the homesteads. And the first one. Number one was. <laughs> meat. That's the number one thing. Across the board, in a landslide, meat was the best way that people were growing their own food. Ready? Ugh, gross. <laughs> it's loud. Meat! Meat, by far, in a landslide, was the biggest contributing factor to being more self-sufficient, growing a bigger percentage of your food. So I'm gonna feed our meat here and we'll talk about why meat's so important. Yummy. When doing our research for this video, we asked these different homesteads, what is the best way that you're able to grow food for your family? 64% of these homesteads said meat. Every big producer, big grower on their homestead grew some sort of meat. And Steph from Red Pine Pastures explains why. She says, I work evenings and nights as a nurse and dedicate my days to growing, raising food. She's growing 50 to 75% of her food. And in her opinion, she says, the best way to grow food from their experience is raising animals. Meat provides the most nutrition density, requires less input for more output versus say, growing lettuce. Plus you're growing meat, which can taste better than growing lettuce too. Oh, lettuce well, sometimes, you know, lettuce, you need a dressing. Meat, just a little salt. Mm, true. <clears throat> I like lettuce. I have nothing against lettuce. But we think the same thing. It actually takes us less time feeding our beef cows in the morning or our pigs versus working in our garden, which is why for the last 10 years, <laughs> our gardens have been kind of underperforming in our homestead. And that's a goal for ours in the future. But across the board, all of these growers, they grow meat and that provides them just a higher level of self-sufficiency on their homestead. So with no contest, grow some meat on your homestead. But of course, we eat more than meat, so what's the next thing that you should be growing? Oh, hello there. Category number two, vegetables. And included in this, we're gonna throw in herbs and other plants, but not fruit, because fruit was its own category. So vegetables and then like herbs, Every single homestead who's producing around 75% of their food is growing some sort of vegetables. Mm. You can sit. Join me. Oh, join me. Join you. Join me in my Join pumpkin. the two of you. You're gonna be a third wheel here, but. <laughs> here, I'll hold this. <laughs> All right, I will get behind this one as far as definitely herbs. Herbs have been, I think, one of our best garden time investments. Yeah, time investments, it's huge. Especially because they come back every year. My herbs come back every year and they keep growing into snowfall. You can't stop them. <laughs> but, mint. I mean, you're, at you, you're mint. not gonna get like 
much food from your herbs. That's why we combined them with the vegetables in this category because everybody was growing herbs, everybody was growing vegetables, but herbs don't really But eat they're here. delicious. But they're great on that meat you're growing. So why? Why vegetables are our number two category? Why not say fruit? Uh, Matt and Sarah who are on YouTube. Hi everyone, guess where we are? Pixie and I are in the greenhouse. And they say growing vegetables is the most affordable bang for our buck item. Once we purchase seeds, we can either repurchase at affordable prices or save seeds and continue the cycle for almost nothing. Their point about veggies is fantastic. Seeds are inexpensive. Most of the time you can find them, especially at the end of the growing season, keep them for next year for almost next to nothing. And they're pretty easy to plant. Take your kids out in your beds, plant some veggies. It's essentially what we do every year. And every year we do get something from our garden. When we ask all these homesteads, what's the best thing that you grow for food? 16% said veggies. And another reason why that might be is because they're so shelf stable if you know how to can, if you know how to put up your veggies. Uh, it's a great way to have a ton of food. And a lot of them, like this pumpkin that we picked months ago, are shelf stable without any fancy work. You can't put a piece of meat in the corner of your house and uh, hope that it doesn't go spoil, but you can do that with a pumpkin and this pumpkin is still good. And if my wife would ever get around to making that pumpkin pie she promised me like four months ago, I love you, babe. You do plenty work. That pumpkin is really figuring big <laughs> me in this. and my pumpkin. <laughs> we should put a face on it. Can I Wilson. like draw a little face? Wilson. <laughs> I know you, I know you. We okay? Okay. What was the point I'm supposed to share right now? <laughs> you can leave your vegetables. You can garden. leave. It's less oh. of a lifestyle How change. How could you? How could you leave Wilson? You can leave your vegetables. <laughs> so while you cannot leave your livestock without someone to watch them and feed them, uh, your veggies you can leave for a couple days, come back, and go on a vacation for a week. You're gonna have a lot of weeding to do when you get back and Wilson might be angry at you, but. It's the less of a lifestyle change. Less, it's less of a lifestyle change to grow some veggies. And here's number three of our big three. All of the homesteaders had these on their farm. Egg laying chickens. My guess is probably most of us even started with egg laying chickens. So yeah, this is where our homestead origins began. So we hang on to them. If you have a homestead, it's like, why not have egg laying chickens? They work, you know, with all your other livestock, with your garden, it, it's like this symbiosis. Donna from Fantail Valley hey Homestead. There. I'm Donna from Fantail Valley Homestead. We are a homestead in the south of New Zealand. We have 10 acres. She says, our laying chickens are predominantly raised on restaurant scraps and forage. These chickens we're breeding, and I think we're up to the third or fourth generation and we're trying to breed them so that they can mostly forage for their own food. This is really cool. Her 12 year old is actually working on developing her own breed of chicken. She's working on a land race laying breed of her own that thrives on forage so we get lots of eggs for not much money or effort, which that sounds like a perfect chicken to me. So they are a mixture of a few different heritage breeds. They are part well summer, part highline, part brown leghorn, um, and part mystery chicken. I think that also highlights a big benefit of egg laying chickens is the reproductive abilities. If you have generations of cows, it takes a long time to develop your own breed, what works best on your farm, but within a few generations of chickens, you can really focus on the traits that you want to have in your farm and your chicks hatch in 21 days, the chickens you have at your own farm, so you can have your own breed of chickens at your farm in pretty much no time. That's a really cool thing. And your kids can do it. We'll have links below to all the channels and different uh, homesteaders we mentioned if they ask to be shared. So that's our top, the, so that were the, so those were the top three things, all these homesteaders. <coughs> so those were the top three things, these, pro these big producers, you give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so those were the big three, meat, veggies and egg laying chickens. And that's what we focus on for a long time on our homestead. We could not go without 
talking about the runner ups though, because these are very important and one of them is kind of our favorite. <laughs> so, dairy. Let's talk about dairy and why it didn't make the big three, but is still a very important piece of any, well not any, but of some self-sufficient homesteads. Yeah, this one I think is easy to know why it wouldn't be on all everybody's farm. It takes a lot of time. Because dairy, of people like me. <laughs> dairy is a lifestyle change. You're really committing to your dairy animal. And that's not for everybody, What? because maybe you work full time, maybe you're working nights and you don't want to come home and milk a cow. Even beef, a lot of the farms had beef. This was surprising. But they didn't do dairy. Like it, the, of the homesteads who filled out our form, almost all of them were raising beef and way less were had a dairy cow. So just that, that simple step from having a cow versus having to milk it and be a, this, this, yes, you. Yeah, that's fine. You're worse than a goat, Freddie. When we ask all these homesteads, what is the best way that you grow food? Nobody mentioned egg laying chickens as, as their, their favorite. one favorite, but of the homesteads who had a dairy cow, almost all of them mentioned that as their favorite. 16% of our homesteads said dairy. So a lot a smaller of a percentage of them have dairy, but of them, all the people who have dairy are essentially saying dairy is my favorite. Yeah, and I think uh, Liv summed it up when she said, Our dairy cow provides the most bang for our buck. Our cow feeds the house, her calf each year, a steer calf for the freezer, and we use clabbered skim milk to supplement the pigs and laying hens. I feel like if you have a dairy cow and you're into the milk thing, it becomes like the base of your farm. It's the base of your pyramid of your farm. Because <laughs> you've learned to everything becomes something that feeds from the milk. Ours, our dairy cows have become like a centerpiece to our self-sufficiency. So you might, and I might not be right for you. That's why it's a runner up. It's not yeah. one of the big three, but if you're thinking about it, it's incredibly awesome. Our other runner up was fruit. A lot of homesteads, but not all of them were growing fruit. Now we're gonna get to what you should not spend your time growing if you wanna produce a lot of food. But before we do, if this video has been helpful so far, letting you know what to focus your time and energy on, if you like these kind of videos with data from other homesteads, give it a thumbs up and that'll let us know to keep making videos like that. Now, why would Homesteady, a channel who is always telling you to just start and grow something, even take some time to tell you to not grow something? This seems like anti-Homesteady. It's actually a pretty important thing that you're gonna have to learn when you start trying to grow all your food, <laughs> is that you shouldn't try to grow all your food, at least not right away. Cody from the YouTube channel, More Than Farmers. This right here, is our home. Provides our family of six with beef, poultry, milk, eggs, vegetables, and fruit. I think he said it best. Growing the most food possible comes down to being the most efficient. In gardening, it's having the willpower to not try all the different varieties and vegetables that you'll barely eat. Grow the things that are staples, that are the most space and time efficient to grow. A cow gives you dairy products and beef, and beef is super easy to raise. Instead of raising goats, sheep, cows, pigs, and chickens, <clears throat> <laughs> we only raise beef and chicken. Maybe eventually we'll do more, but it's more efficient to get better at a couple things before branching out. By sticking with fewer things, we're able to grow more with less effort. And that's where he really hits the nail on the head when you're beginning, when you're starting out to focus on just a few things, in time you can grow and do more, but just focusing your energy in the beginning, that'll help you do better and actually grow more. And this is coming from a guy who is growing more than 75% of his food. That's what he filled out on our questionnaire. So Austin, let me ask you. Yes. Have Austin and Kendra ever made this mistake in their <laughs> homestead of doing too much? Oh no, we don't ever make mistakes in our homestead. Our very first garden at our apartment was this little baby thing and we got no food from it. And then we moved to the country and we're like, hey, you know what? Let's have a one acre garden. We did so great on the last one. Let's have a huge one. I feel like you're insulting my gardening skills a lot with this video. She's not a great gardener. I grow things. You're, and you're Children. a messy gardener too. <laughs> I'm like the messy one in the relationship, but you go to the garden bed and mine is like square foot Pristine. with it's weeded weird. And, and mulched and yours is like, pff, 
I'm Survival like, grow, of the fittest. Babies, if that grow. tomato can't handle a few weeds and bugs, he doesn't deserve I don't even to be want on it. my sandwich. I don't want to put that in my body. <laughs> okay. Now. All that is to say. <laughs> so with much fear and a little trepidation, we're going to say don't grow these things. Yeah. So here are the reason these are the things we're saying not to grow. Of all the big producers, maybe one mentioned growing them or nobody. If it's not coming from us, blame them. Links below to their channels. <laughs> Angry comment to their channels. Okay, <laughs> so. Okay, so don't spend any time growing nuts. Grain. Don't spend any time trying to grow fish. Honestly, you aquaponics people, I know are gonna be mad about that one. You guys grow a ton of food, but you didn't fill out my form. <laughs> Don't spend time growing mushrooms. Maybe that's because it's more fun to go pick wild mushrooms. We love picking wild mushrooms, so maybe that's why they said that. This one's gonna make everybody mad. Uh... Don't. Don't spend time with bees. Get them, girls. I do not want to make the bee people mad. I mean, bee people, they're probably the last people you want to really take <laughs> off. They're, they're the people who are like not afraid to go up and grab a oh, swarm of honeybees and take them home. These people are hardcore. I've seen them like bare hand, like we're gonna go to a swarm they're now. Like, they're not aggressive because they're relocated. swarming and they just like, shink. <laughs> Meanwhile, I once filmed a bee guy and I was like, I had my telephoto lens on. I was like, I'm gonna be 300 feet away from you. You go ahead and do your bee thing. I, uh, I have done bees in the past. My dad and I did bees. The thing about bees and honey was it took a lot of setup, a lot of learning. Bees are not easy, in my opinion. And I think that's why they didn't make it on the list. They're not easy. You're right. And it's not a lot of variety in your product. You're getting one product, honey. Oh. I'm not saying we'll never do bees. I would love it if one of my kids would do it. Uh, again, we're not telling you to never grow any of these things, really. We're not saying don't grow. We're just saying if you're trying to grow more and if your priority is growing a lot of your food, these are not the areas that these bigger producers focus on. Okay. We're sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay Let's get now, through this. And I know. There will be people in the comments who say, but I grow these things and it's fantastic. Hey, feel free. In the comments. Put that in the comments. Defend your mushrooms. Tell us why you love these things and educate us. Why do you love it? But also tell us what's easy about it and what's hard about it. Yeah. Okay, so at this point, we've come to the conclusion that you should be growing meat, vegetables, and eggs on your homestead. You're probably wondering what kind of meat, what kind of veggies. What specifically should I be ordering right now, this time of year, so that I can grow it this year? We got you covered. Let's get into the actual specific items that homesteaders said were the best to grow for food. Next question we asked our biggie bunchy growers was what one specific thing are you growing that is the best bang for your buck, produces the most food. What one specific thing? Beef. Hands down, beef wins. And that makes sense because, I mean, they're huge, right? You can grow up beef and get so much food from that beef. Plus, what so many people said was you can also grow them off of your own pasture. If you have the grass, if you have the forage, it's very low input, huge output. Now maybe you're thinking, oh, I can't do beef. I have a full-time job, I gotta commute. Don't write yourself off so quick. We have a whole lesson in the Pioneer Library where we went on a field trip to Mac Farms and Eli showed us how he runs a really good-sized beef herd with a full-time job. He shared with everybody how he rotationally grazes before he goes to work. It's really great. It's just a matter of how much time have you thought and planned for what's coming up. Um, and if you do that, you'll be fine. It's, it's really easy to squeeze that in after work, before work, whatever. So Pioneers, there'll be a link below uh, to that particular lesson in the library. And if you're not a Pioneer, there'll be a link below where you can become one and gain access to all that. A disadvantage of beef is that they will take a little 
bigger to get to butcher size, so it'll take you a few years to get there. But the number two slot on what meat you should grow is one that can fill your freezer a lot faster as you wait for your beef to get ready, and that was chickens. Specifically, chickens raised for meat. So in two to four months, you can have a freezer full of chickens grown right out of your backyard. You don't need a lot of space for them either. Chickens you can grow even if you have a small backyard. We did it in our last homestead on our teeny tiny backyard. And you can butcher it yourself at home, which can save a lot of money as well. The runners ah. up to beef and chickens were some of our favorites, actually, sheep and goats. Sheep and groats, groats. Yeah, and groats. <laughs> They're a great poor man's beef. If you can't have, if, if you, you actually don't can't do a beef, space for do a sheep. Beef. Sheep, yeah, delicious. Goats, they all require, in my opinion, more difficult fencing. <laughs> but yes. but you don't need like a chute to handle them like you would a beef. So that is an advantage. Somebody to them said as well. they bought a bunch of male oh, kids. Yeah. They would just buy every year a bunch of male kids, raise them up for meat. Tons of meat in the freezer. I delicious. miss eating goat. My daughter won't let me kill any goats and eat them anymore. He's gonna try but to sneak one. <laughs> I'm gonna smuggle some goat. Yeah, but we really love goats and sheep. Now, what was not mentioned by anyone for meat? And I think I know why. Ducks. ducks. We, Nobody said they wanted to raise ducks. Nobody even mentioned. We should have Mor Morgan fill it out. <laughs> duck, we've done duck for meat. And I think the reason why nobody mentioned them is because they are a nightmare to butcher to the point where it's hard to find a professional butcher who will take ducks. Yeah, there's, there's a way with wax and we did it. Yeah. But it is a lot different it is very different than butchering chickens yeah we have one duck walking around the place ducks. Uh, yeah ducks maybe you love duck meat and you just want to eat duck so do ducks where's wilson there he is wilson wilson oh god don't do that to me again never leave never again never again okay let's talk about vegetables we might just make it did that thought ever cross your brain? You gonna join me? Oh, sure. Oh, you can sure. join me and Wilson. Okay, so meat was number one, veggies number two, but what kind of veggies, right? You grow your tomatillos. I like veggies. I really love vegetables. The one vegetable that you should focus on growing At is... First, the humble mm, squash. Squash or... Potatoes, starch vegetables. They were kind of like tied for the popular veggie. Why? Why? Well, tell them what, tell them what they tell said. Tell them what they said. Steph and Chris? Well, most people have probably heard the, uh, the phrase, don't put all your eggs in one basket. But uh, today we're gonna talk about not putting all your squash in one basket. From Hickory Croft Farm, squash. I have to tell you, guys. Steph, Chris? You've changed my life as far as gardening and squash go. This is like second to maybe having my children, the most important day of my life. I didn't mention our marriage. Oh, burn. <laughs> squash, they say. We often joke that squash could save the world. It's versatile, easy to store, and can be grown with very little effort. It can be made into flour, animal feed, desserts, as well as main courses, and is very simple to save seeds from. Squash results in a lot of poundage of food, which can be stored for us, but transferred to livestock when it starts to deteriorate. And the best part is that most people can grow it even if they only have a small plot. Did you know most pumpkin pies are actually made with butternut squash? Yes, I did know that. Fun fact. The canned pumpkin Sorry, is actually Wilson. squash. It's delicious. Uh, my family believes that the best pumpkin pies are from Hubbard or Hubert squash. So. I, I think what really struck me here is that you grow it and it's ready to store just like this. Oh yeah. You don't have to can it, you don't have to freeze it, you don't have to preserve it in any way, it's ready. And the seeds are in there to replant and the they're, next year. They're so easy to get the seeds out And of. you can do so much, including feed animals, humans. And they're right, it's yeah. a very small plot and you can grow a lot. But I'm gonna end this video 
just showing you our most amazing squash for this year. One sec. Look at that beauty. It's heavy. This is almost 17 pounds of green stripe Kershaw squash. Give it a try. Squash was the most popular. The runner up was potatoes. Yes. People were fanning over their potato. Well, patches. potatoes are kind of similar, right? They're easier yeah. to store. So we narrowed it down to just a starchy. Yeah. Starchy vegetable is going to really potatoes, give you a lot of bang for your buck. Sweet body. potatoes. Yeah. Also easier to store. That is a ton of information. If you're really just want to know, like, uh, what do I do with this? Where do I start? One second. Before we get to that, we had so many people give great tips, great advice. Thank you to all those. We couldn't fit you all in this video, but we are putting together a workbook with so many more bits of wisdom and advice, lessons. That workbook will be in the Pioneer Library, but we're gonna give it to everybody watching for free. Click there, join our email list. Next week, I will send it to everyone who's on the email list for free, so don't miss out on that. There's one piece of advice in there that if we had had it 10 years ago, would have completely changed how we homesteaded. What was it? Yes, that certainly would have changed things. <laughs> I know the gears in your head are spinning right now. We threw a ton at you and you're like, oh, all right, where do I start? Just start with meat chickens. We have a playlist right here that will start with the day before your chicks get here, what you have to have ready, then your chicks arrival, all the way through butchering them. It will show you everything this make this the year you start just start click that playlist watch it get some meat chickens your life will never be the same and it'll be more delicious wilson 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 <laughs>